What's up everybody? Me, PJ, back again with another installment of my CD Showcase series. This one does not have a concrete theme. It's just a bunch of albums I purchased recently. We've got some 2015 releases, we've got some 2014 releases, we've got some 2013 releases, and then some random ones from the early 2000s and one from the 70s. So anyways, let's get started with this. The first one we have is, I believe, a 2014 release, and that is Elegion with their album Elements of the Infinite. Uh, if you're not too familiar with these guys, these guys are a tech death band, but they're very melodic in nature. I really, really like this album. I kind of wrote them off after hearing some songs from their debut album back in, I think, 2011 or 2010. But I ended up checking this out on a whim, and I really liked it, so I bought it. And yeah, check out these guys. They're called Allegian. Uh, very good stuff. I believe they're making a new album this year, and I'm definitely going to be on the lookout for that, and so should you. All right, next up we have an album from 2006. It turns 10 this June, and I might do a retrospective review on it when it comes that time. But anyways, this album is As Blood Runs Black with Allegiance. Uh, these guys are a deathcore band. This album's from 2006. It's out on Media Scare. Uh, it's gotten a little bit rare in uh, present times. I had to order this from Germany to avoid getting scalped the shit out of my wallet. But anyways, I paid about like 20, 25 bucks for this. Uh, there's a lot of people trying to scam you out of like $200 with, for this CD. But as much as I love this album, I would never ever pay that much for physical music that in no way supports the band. So if you're going to buy like used albums, at least buy them for cheap because it doesn't support the band. Like, used, used music does not support the band, no matter, like, what you might think. But anyways, that's As Blood Runs Black with Allegiance. And personally, I'm calling it now, Mediascare is probably going to release, like, a 10th year anniversary edition of this around June. So, uh, if they do, I called it. Alright, next up, we have a Death Grind release. And I mentioned these guys in my Abbott review, so for those of you wondering, you probably know who it is. I'm going to manually censor the artwork because uh, this band's Facebook actually got shut down because of it. But anyways, that is Benighted with Carnivore Sublime. And this is a fantastic Death Grind release. I know I free the nipple and all, but you know, it's, it's freaking YouTube, man. Like, they take down shit like nobody's business. So, you know, I gotta manually censor this shit for you guys, even though I'm sure many of you guys are old enough to be, like, seeing female nipples and listening to Benighted. But anyways, great death grind, uh, fantastic album, loved Asylum Cave, this is more of the same, it's fantastic, check it out. Alright, next up is a band everyone and their mother freaking knows, like, your grandma probably knows these guys. Anyways, that's uh, Black Dahlia Murder with Abysmal. Uh, great freaking art direction on this thing. I uh, love the art. Uh, it's just awesome trifold digipack. Looks very, very nice. Uh, I like this quite a bit. Um, the Black Dahlia Murder al always releases pretty solid stuff. Really liked uh, Ritual. I don't even think I've ever listened to Ever Black. I need to get on that, I know. But anyways, Abysmal's pretty great. But yeah, check it out. Black Dahlia Murder. Can't go wrong with that stuff. Alright, next up we have another 2015 release, and that is Cattle Decapitation with their latest album, The Anthropocene Extinction. And it's a very, very good release. Uh, very progressive as well as continuing in their death grind vein. And I really like this a lot. You've got some really cool experimental type stuff. You even have a small contribution from uh, Author and Punisher, which was pretty cool. And yeah, check out Cattle Decapitation if you haven't already. This album made huge waves last year, so I'm sure most of you guys have heard it. But anyways, check this out. It's it's pretty cool. There's some cool uh, doctored band photos inside of like the members looking all uh, looking all dead and drugged out. That's pretty cool. So anyways, uh, normal photo right there. But anyways, uh, yeah. Cattle Decapitation is pretty great. I love their last album, Monolith of Inhumanity. 
And yeah, this one is very much in the same vein. Liked it a lot. Go check it out. Alright, next up we have some black metal, and that comes in the form of the Czech Republic-based band Cult of Fire. This is their second album, Ascetic Meditation of Death. Uh, if you can tell by the cover, it's very much inspired by Hindu mythology. And I'm going to take out the booklet because the art direction on this thing was phenomenal. You got the first page. It's very morbid art, but it's also very great. And it really fits the atmosphere of the music very well. Now, these guys, their first album is very much just satanic black metal. But they do add in elements of, like, an organ and some other atmospheric type elements that make it really interesting. Uh, their first album is called Triumvirate, and it's pretty readily available. Uh, the CD version of this release is not as available as the vinyl is, however. Uh, the vinyl is pretty easy to find. You can find it through Hell's Headbangers pretty easily. Uh, the CD I had to order through Discogs, unfortunately. But anyways, it's a pretty great album. Uh, it's on Iron Bonehead. The CD is on Necroshine. Uh, Necroshine, as far as I believe, is a sub-label of Iron Bonehead. So it's pretty much the same thing. But anyways, uh, check this out. It's called Cult of Fire. They add in elements of Indian classical music, like sitars and other elements of that in this album, and it works really well with the black metal, and they keep the essential black metal elements from their first album, which I still need to get, but it's a great album, go check it out. Alright, next up is an album, this is probably the most I will ever pay for a used CD, but anyways, this is uh, Dark Moor with their second album, The Hall of the Olden Dreams. And this is a power metal band from Spain. They play a neoclassical style of power metal. I paid about 40 bucks from this. I had to get it from Japan. That was like the closest place you can get it without getting scalped to shit. But anyways, this is a great album. Uh, their first album is not super great, but this album and the album that comes after it, which I also own, are very, very good. Uh, they're neoclassical power metal, very much in the vein of, like, Rhapsody. Uh, they have a female singer, though, and it's very good. I really like this album. I like the third album more, and that one's more easily available. So check out Dark Moor. They're a very good band and definitely worth your attention. However, they kind of dropped off after their original singer left, so be wary of that when you go into their newer material. Next up, we have a band that pretty much everyone's heard of, whether you love them, hate them, you're indifferent to them. No matter what, you've probably heard of these guys mentioned somewhere. And that is Ghost, with their album Opus Eponymous. This uh, is their first album. I like this more than their other albums, personally. That's just personal opinion. If you like their others more, fine. But anyways, this is very much a cult rock in the style of early 70s bands, like heavy blues, heavy psych type stuff. Kind of sounds like a watered-down Merciful Fate. Their singer on this album sounds like King Diamond with a way worse range, but I like it a lot. Uh, this is their first album. Definitely worth checking out. Uh, give it a listen if you haven't, and make up your own mind as to whether you like these guys or not. All right, next up, we have probably one of the biggest and most consistent bands in metal, and that is Iron Maiden with their latest album, Book of Souls. Uh, this is the two-disc edition, which I think is the only edition at this point. But anyways, it comes in a nice slipcase. Very nice book with it as well. Got some really cool additional art in here. And, uh, yeah, all their albums with Bruce Dickinson, personally, I love. Like, even the stuff that is considered their worst, like uh, No Prayer for the Dying and Fear of the Dark. Really love that. Also, their 2000 stuff is fantastic on par with their 80s stuff in my opinion love this uh, love this art direction they went with on the book of souls very much goes with the concept and this is one of the best special editions that Iron Maiden has done in my opinion so anyways that's Iron Maiden with the book of souls alright next two albums are both from the same band these guys are basically a hardcore band. They've got a lot of crossover appeal with metalheads, and they're called Nails. Uh, their first album is called Unsilent Death. 
that's what it looks like right there. And their second album is called Abandon All Life. Uh, these guys are supposedly putting out an album this year, and it's going to be their third album released via Nuclear Blast, if I remember correctly. But anyways, Nails is basically a hardcore band. They incorporate a lot of elements of like more extreme styles of hardcore, like power violence and grindcore, and a bit of old school death metal as well. Uh, if you, that sounds intriguing to you, definitely check these guys out. They're very fast, very pummeling. Uh, both of these albums are only about 13 minutes long, so it's only going to take you about a half hour to listen to their entire discography. So it's definitely worth a listen. Alright, next up we have a 2014 release, and this is one of the best albums, in my opinion, that came out in 2014. That is Nea Bliviscaris with Citadel. I was a huge fan of Portal of Eye back when it came out in 2012, and this album, like, was miles ahead of where Portal of Eye was, even though Portal of Eye was one of the best albums of its year when it came out. The second song on this, Painters of the Tempest Part 2, is a fantastic song. It's one of my favorite songs at this point in time, and I just absolutely love all the clean vocals, all the violin parts. This band is just great in my opinion, and definitely worth a listen if you're on the fence about checking them out. Next up we have the oldest album that you're going to see in this collection update, and that is the band Queen with Queen 2. Uh, this is one of their least popular albums. It's their second album, obviously, but it's one of my favorites. It's definitely an underrated classic. This band really gets done an injustice when they're looked at retrospectively as a singles band because this album only ever spawned one single, and that is the last track on the album called Seven Seas of Rye. Uh, there's some great songs on this, uh, Father to Son, uh, there's this three song medley I really love, uh, starts with Ogre Battle, goes into the Fairy Feller's Master Stroke, and ends with Nevermore, and it's a very great uh, medley. Uh, also March of the Black Queen is a big highlight of this disc. It's very, very good. If you're a fan of progressive rock, progressive metal, and a little bit of neoclassical metal as well, definitely check out Queen 2, and while you're at it, check out Queen's 1970s work. Uh, after 1980, they became more of a pop group, in my opinion, and I'm not super into that stuff, but definitely check out Queen uh, if you've written them off as being pop garbage or a singles band. Definitely check out this album. Start with this, go to A Night at the Opera, maybe A Day at the Races, as well as Sheer Heart Attack and News of the World, and maybe even Jazz. Those are all really great albums by this band, and I think they'll get you into this style of uh, rock. Alright, two more to go. They're both 2015 releases. Uh, first up, we have the band So Hideous with their album Lorestein. At least I believe that's how you say it. It's a trifold digipack. Looks really, really nice. Got this really nice artwork like that. Big portrait. These guys play a style of post-black metal that should probably appeal to fans of like Fen or Death Heaven. And it's very cool. I love this album in particular because of just, like, the beauty of it. It's got a really cool concept as well. It's based off of the seven minutes of brain activity after you die, which is a bit of a morbid concept, but this album has a really good ju juxtaposition of beautiful orchestration with sort of just this despair brought by the black metal moments, and it works really, really well. I really love this album, and I can like highly recommend it to you guys. I think it's definitely worth checking out. Alright, last up is an album I actually reviewed last year, and that is Sunless Rise with their debut album Unrevealed. These guys are a Russian melodic death metal band, very technical in style. It's very good stuff, very promising debut from a band that had been silent for many years. And I really like this. I really hope you guys do as well. There's a lot of modern metal elements in this as well. And I really hope you like this. Uh, it's got a really nice, nice looking digipack. It's got a couple stickers as well. I haven't really done anything with them because I don't really like using stickers that metal bands uh, 
put out with their CDs. It just feels kind of wrong to me. But anyways, uh, that's Sunless Rise with Unrevealed. All right, and that's it for this uh, CD showcase. I hope you guys really enjoyed this. Let me know what releases were your favorites. If you have any thoughts on any bands I showed in particular or think there are albums I need to get by certain bands, let me know. And until next time, keep it metal.